How did you become your family's black sheep? Dad's heroes are Led Zeppelin. He's got more bootlegs of their live shows than even exist for most famous bands, except maybe the Grateful Dead, who neither of us can stand. My dad saw Kiss, Rush, Bob Seger, and a bunch of other classic bands during the 70s. In 1980, he took a big business job, and while still praising Zeppelin like gods, my parents were shocked when they showed me Kiss, and I said, I want a bass. Gene Simmons, as I know now, is a piece of garbage as a person, but goddamn is he a good performer. My grandma got me a guitar, not a bass because I'd get bored with it, against my parents' wishes. I worked hard learning and got myself a bass and played it through a guitar amp for years until one of my dad's childhood friends, who played in a well-known 80s hair metal band, I won't name here, gave me a vintage bass amp that I still have and treasure today. Then in 2012, I started touring the U.S. as a singer and bassist. After joining a band and a real record label and sometimes making thousands of dollars per show, my dad still hates my music career, but at least it gives me a grudging amount of respect that I wish I would have gone as a kid. I may be the family outcast, but I knew what I wanted. Nobody believed me and I proved them wrong. Decent enough for me to feel I accomplished what kid me wanted to do. I'm just happy now that I knew exactly what I wanted while really young. Got it. That's the rare part. Becoming a good bass player is more important to me than getting actual career success from it. Because that wasn't even a thought for Kid Me. I just knew I need to get a bass and absolutely be a beast on it. Recently, a drummer from another band came to hang out with my guitar player and I, and he recognized me and said, You're my stage name. You're like a legend. I've had a few mega fans before, and I played it off like, Hey, thank you so much. But inside, I was like, Wow, that's so cool. Oh my god, did that person actually just say that to me? <laughs> There's no cool way to articulate when someone recognizes you and you kind of just want to cry and be like, thank you. His grandma's guitar gift was a classic case of I'll show you. And he did, by turning it into a bass career. Way to go, grandma's favorite rock star. Story two. Moved out of home to escape serious mistreatment and neglect. I worked hard to support myself. Full-time work, paying rent but also did a lot of substances, took risks and dressed alternately and developed an increasingly private life separate from that of my family. Overall, I clung on and eventually began to do quite well for myself, but because I dropped out of education and moved out of home in the process, most people ended up just writing me off as a troubled problem kid who'd never amount anything more than manual labor type jobs, etc. More recently in life, I managed to change my trajectory and began attending one of the top three universities in the world for my chosen subject area, just about to graduate too. It's been an interesting ride because the more successful it appears I might become, the more people who previously wrote me off have tried to come back into my life. Very few of these people genuinely supported me, if at all, but now I'm being lauded by them as a secret genius. So now I'm the good type of black sheep, I guess. It's hard not to feel a little cynical about others sometimes, but my experiences with such types just make me value the true people in my life all that much more. It's interesting because when I was the black sheep of the family, all I ever wanted was love, family, and support. And I would have given my right arm for more in the way of a sense of family. But now that I'm more grown up, stabilized, more accomplished, and going places in life, this late stage influx of relatives and interest in my story has been a big turnoff for me. And I can't really bring myself to open up my heart to a bunch of people who, deep down, I know would 100% guaranteed still be ignoring me were I not attending a top world university etc. I have no interest in relatives if they're shallow and simply want to be associated with my success, which is what all this interest in me from them very much feels like. They weren't there for me during my low points or when I was building myself up from the bottom, so I won't let them pretend to be chummy best pals family with me now. The only people I have time for are the sincere and genuinely good of heart. Shallow people are all the same. When you have enough experience with them, you can spot them a mile away. Story 3. By the time I was born, my parents hated each other, so the care and attention my older brother and sister got was not passed on to me. I was always a hassle, too emotional, too rebellious. I had less guidance as a child because my parents argued throughout my childhood. Rather than help me look after myself, I was blamed for not knowing what to do and making mistakes. Over the years, this rubbed off on my sister and brother and even family friends. I was a mess whilst my older siblings were all well-adjusted. In teenage years, I was fully considered a problem child, even by myself. 
I went from being top of class at the end of year seven to being only allowed to do four exams and leaving school because I hadn't done any homework. It was a challenge in class. Even as an adult, when I tried to improve but failed without support, the criticism would go on. Like I've hassled my family by needing support or asking for help. A perpetuation of how they saw me as a child. No consideration for how I had improved as an adult. I lived from a young adult until the age of 39, cycling through anxiety and depression, because I thought I was a bad person for struggling with life. I felt shame and guilt for just being me. At 39, I attempted to end it all, and luckily I failed. All good now. I realized I was beating myself up over my feelings, because that is how I was taught to handle my feelings. I don't blame my parents, because their lives were traumatic. Trauma begets trauma. My sister, after so much good work has been done, still seems to delight in falsely accusing me of things or suggesting my motives are false in some way. We haven't spoken in years and she didn't even reach out after my attempt. But still, still, does what she can to cause an issue between me and my parents. I just ignore her and get on. Wish I had this wisdom at 20. Story 4. I stopped saying yes. My family was controlled by my mother and she's an absolute snake in the grass. She had me brainwashed. I was afraid of her, but fully believed she would protect me and supply me with what I needed. She did do those things, but if I was ever out of line, I wasn't simply shown the correct path. I was belittled and humiliated into falling back in line. I met my lady, and she showed me this behavior wasn't normal. She gave me the drive and courage to say no and start living for me. Then, my mother accused me of doing substances when it didn't deal with her horrendous attitude towards me and life in general. I was done with that side of the family once they staged an intervention and openly took her side after knowing she treated me like filth my whole childhood and beyond. I don't hate them because I love who I am. A black sheep in their eyes, finally happy in mine. Story 5 I'm the black sheep on both my mom and dad's sides. Maybe it's me. Mom's side is lower functioning. From an early age, I was helping to pay bills, fielding phone calls from debt collectors, and managing small life difficulties for them. I was always going the extra mile, but rarely got any effort back. After moving 600 miles away, getting married, getting my master's degree, and having children, it became very obvious that I was being used. I asked them to make efforts for me, drive to my house, attend a college graduation, come for the birth of a child. They were outraged that I asked for reciprocation. That was 10 years ago. I've yet to be invited to a wedding, family reunion, graduation, or get phone calls when family members get sick or have important events happen. Dad was 17 in high school when I was born. He joined the military when he graduated and moved to Europe for 15 years of my childhood. Never a phone call, birthday present, or visit in that time, or ever. I did not want him to walk me down the aisle when I got married. I was close with his parents before this, but this was an insult they would not abide by. Same story. That was 20 years ago. No invite to weddings, graduations, family reunions, or updates and major life events. I email grandma every two weeks and visit once a year, but it's always strained and awkward and no other family will be present when I'm there. Story six. My dad had six brothers. All lived near each other as adults. My dad was active duty in the Air Force as I was growing up. So while the family lived near each other, we were traveling and living all over the world. I was four years old when I remember meeting my grandparents uncles and cousins for what I thought was the first time ever. I was seven before I learned what the titles of uncle, aunt, grandparent, cousin never meant. I never connected with any of my extended family. In the age of social media, I tried to connect with my extended family and it was better not to make the effort. When I talk about my family, I talk about my parents, my sister, step family, and my sister's children. I don't count my extended family. They're complete strangers and I think it is best that way at this point. For my family, we all moved to the Dallas or Fort Worth area in 1991, three months before my 13th birthday. Over the past 15 years, they've moved away from me. Stepsister and her husband moved to Galveston. Dad and stepmom moved to Oklahoma. My mom, my sister, and her kids moved to Oklahoma a few years ago. So my family moved away from me. Damn. On a lighter note, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button for more videos like this. Story 7. First, it was because my mom left my father after he was tired of him beating her up. Her family was not okay with her not working harder to keep her family together. Then, it was because I chose not to be baptized at 14, which is when people from their church get baptized. I didn't want to make that commitment yet when I wasn't going to church at the time, so I chose to postpone it. As an atheist now, I think the whole thing is pointless. 
I was still a believer at the time, though. Then I came out as trans. As you would imagine, fanatical Christians weren't okay with that. Some are starting to come around now, especially the ones that left the church. I have hope, but I also don't really care if my family ever accepts me anymore. That says more about them than about me. Story 8. My sister was the black sheep first. She dared to be goth in high school. I was lined up to be the poster child of Southern conservatism. Enthusiastically joined the Marines right out of high school. Christian, white male. The moment I left town, I went minimal to no contact with my family for the vast majority of my enlistment. I was stationed nearby and would come visit, but they weren't included in my day-to-day. -day. Left the military much less conservative, all the way atheist, and shattered my dad's vicarious dreams of me becoming some military officer. Before he passed away, I was nothing more than a socialist like Obama to him. Oddly enough, my aunt was similarly talked down about, and she followed a very similar path before me. I guess the black sheep are the ones that leave. Story 9. I'm autistic. Don't wear my hair like or dress like a proper woman. I cut my own hair until I deem it short enough and good enough. And worst of all, I'm still looking for a job in my mid-twenties because I haven't found one suitable for my skills and needs. Now I have a crippling fear of being abandoned by people who say, okay, I'll pick you up after your shift, and then don't pick me up at all. It's that last one that drives my mother to treat me as subhuman, even though she blatantly denies it when I call her out on it with years of evidence in the form of wearing down my physical and mental health. They constantly make me do stuff she could do on her own. I'm looking for a work-from-home job now that isn't scam-filled and is something I can actually do and not mess up at. But that's not enough. Story 10. In my childhood, I realized that something was wrong with my dysfunctional family. After years of gaslighting and sabotage by my parent, who preferred my 10-year older sibling, I understood that I wasn't truly part of their family. My older sibling grew up poorly, resulting in an angry, socially awkward individual who found joy only in coming home to bully and provoke me until he snapped allowing him to harm me. This went on for years because my parent didn't want to bother stopping him and didn't care. My sibling is the favorite child because he was wanted and is more similar to my parent, who didn't like being a single parent. The solution was marrying my other parent, who was a convenient choice, although my parent didn't even like them much. I was an unintended addition and nobody wanted me, except my other parent, who was unable to take care of me due to illness. My parent and my brother resented me because I liked and behaved like my other parent. Of course, we weren't loved because I was a child and my other parent was sick, so we dared to have needs instead of just existing. Then my other parent passed away and I lived through hell for years. The perfect sibling eventually went away to chase different careers, reaching their 50s with no dreams accomplished and no family or partner. Long story short, I studied, graduated, worked, and now married with an okay job and an okay life. I have a tolerable relationship with my parent and my sibling because living in different houses work miracles. Life goes better. Of course, my sibling is still the favorite. I don't care. Let them run in circles. Story 11. The audacity of acquiring an education. I'm an educated Romani woman who simultaneously antagonized my family's disdain for education and offended my parents for being a filthy aberration for not being a subservient Romani woman. They were appeased when I consented to marriage. Gave birth to my daughter, but now they've denounced me as a negligent mother for recommencing with my work or teaching. I lecture at my university for my field and work within forensics when obligated. So my mother is now incandescent with rage about my perceived betrayal. I was in a jocular mood yesterday and exasperated with her recalcitrance about the economy and money. So I told her she could now contribute to the electricity bill. The whole of the UK could be the recipient of free electricity if I could convert the incandescent of her paroxysm. Romani parents, who think it's a remnant of the diaspora class system from India, expect differential compliance in all aspects of your life. I chose my spouse as a compromise and even religion, but God, I'm disparaged no matter what I do. Story 12. I was an awkward kid. I'm an awkward adult. I struggled a lot with being social and often felt unwanted by my brother and cousins. Left out, always last, etc. So I'd go spend time with Gramps whenever we visited. Then, for reasons, Mom moved her and I away and went NC with everyone, and by the time we got back in contact, I'd had some significant trauma and was even more awkward and avoided people. Unfortunately, I was under the impression the adults were aware of what happened, including my dad, but they weren't. And it led to a lot of frustration on my part because I thought they weren't being understanding, but actually, they simply didn't know and saw me as being difficult and moody. As a result, I don't have a relationship with anyone in my extended family, including my brother, not so much a black sheep is not a sheep at all. I don't resent them for it. 
As an adult, I understand. Doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, though. Well, at least you know who you are. Your identity never changed. You're an awkward adult. And you can be proud of that. Story 13. I have no idea. I think it's just because I'm more extreme. Like if I draw, I can draw for up to 30 hours nonstop. Sleep three to seven hours. Wake up and draw again. Lose all concept of time and I'll go missing because I forget I need to, well, be human. And let others know I'm alive, I guess. Or because I had to wake up at 4.45 to 5 a.m. to exercise or train. I'd literally throw myself off the bed and onto the floor because I figured pain was the best way to wake up quickly. Or how I know I taught myself how to control my body to not sweat through the power of the mind. I also sat very weird, think animal noises, alien invasion, retro digital alarms, and loud alarms to ring throughout the night at random intervals. Small things here and there that make my family very confused why I do or think such weird or dumb things, despite quite clearly not being dumb. High IQ, PhD, etc. Story 14. I come from a very conservative upper middle class land family, so preppy and very academic is what's expected. My mother was a linguist professor and my dad an engineer. My brothers are in finance and computer science. My cousins are doctors, engineers, architects, and lawyers. I fell in love with music and followed a life of music. No one in my family has ever done that. Additionally, I've dyed my hair different colors over the years, loved weird music, tattoos, and substances. My family didn't understand American subculture as immigrants. In high school, it was a struggle for all of them to understand me. It wasn't extreme. I was a typical 90s alt-rock or raver dude. My family back in Colombia really struggled with it, especially the tattoos. Story 15. Son of my dad. The other black sheep of the family because he had various issues with drinking and substances and has had episodes at family gatherings. No one in the family really likes him. Sins of the father and all that. Because of dad, I'm not allowed past two drinks at family gatherings. My cousins can, but the aunts and uncles watch me more closely. The only child of divorced parents in the family. I play video games. I learned very quickly that bringing my own console to my aunt's house was highly unwelcome. I also watch unpleasant movies and listen to unpleasant music. All of my cousins have met their wives and brought them to family gatherings since their early 20s. I have not brought a single woman to Christmas or any other get-together. I'm a private person, and I think I should date someone a year or more to bring them over and I haven't been with anyone that long yet. Therefore, I'm weird and creepy. Unmarried, childless, and living with my mom. Sorry I didn't create a business in the 1970s or become a big, rich banking executive. Sorry for having struggles in life. When I wasn't making good money, I was looked down for buying cheap Christmas presents for the little cousins. Gave them gift cards one year and was chastised because gifting forms of currency to children without consulting the parents is inappropriate. When I started making decent money, I'm told not to buy too big Christmas or I'll upstage the parents. I found a remote control Camaro for $10 and bought it for my six-year-old cousin who loudly proclaimed it was the best gift ever. So I'm probably in the hall for that one next year. I don't spend much time with them because I don't own my own business or work at a bank and can't take off whenever I want. After my uncle, who I love the most and who has treated me like a proper member of the family the most, passes, I'm probably not going to see them anymore. Story 16. Oh boy. This wasn't me, but my dad's cousin in California. So this was back in the 90s. I was still really young at the time. My family was living in Canada at the time, out in Toronto, Ontario. So what I told my dad was found out by my cousin in Rochester, New York, was watching the news and found out his nephew. My dad's cousin was incarcerated for performing medical duties without a medical permit. In other words, he was an unlicensed doctor, which is a big no-no, especially in the 90s, which at the time there were a lot of unregistered doctors committing certain crimes in California and just say this one cousin was caught. Now the whole reason is another story, but just for context, reasons for those who are wondering... He walked in the hospital for a nurse's job. That way he can help him get towards his medical degree. Somebody thought he was a doctor and rushed him into another surgery, and the rest is history. Never got to meet the cousin up until he got married in 2008, or was it nine? It was so long ago. I can continue on, because this was the most interesting story to ever hit my family surrounding one family member who accidentally, without trying to break the laws, and was incarcerated. Well, if you like these stories, here's more. YouTube thinks you're going to love this. Catch you in that video.